Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio and I just want to say that I have to say my name every time that I start the camera because <laughs> I heard something on a video the other day who said the person just gets right into their video and doesn't tell you their name or anything so I decided that this really is a good policy to say my name every time even though it seems a little weird. Okay, so so many people have signed up for this live creative uh, creative retreat 2024 at the Pigeon Letters, and I guess the girl who is doing all this is Peggy Dean. So um, I got sucked in, <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. And yesterday I watched two or three classes. Most of this stuff is not my thing, but I found one thing specifically that I really did enjoy. So, excuse the create, creative mess desk. Um, I have not worked on art in so long. I've been busy doing things for Artemat that I've forgotten that I like making journals. I've forgotten that I like to watercolor paint. I've forgotten that I like to draw. Well, it all came back in a big old way yesterday. All right, so let me find the class. I've got the computer on, and so I'm trying to find the class that I took yesterday. I think it was from another day. I didn't do them on the day. Like, these are replays that I'm watching. Uh, I took a Zentangle pattern class for beginners, which I was not a beginner, but I thought I would look and see. Um, I watched an air-dry clay class. Very interesting, still not exactly my thing, but I really just was fascinated by all these different things that people do that you really don't think about anyone doing, right? Um, I took a sketch class for, for flowers. I watched a few minutes of it and decided it really wasn't my thing either. Then I watched... What else did I watch? Bum, bum, bum. I watched maybe four or five videos, but I found one in particular that I really do like. And so I did her class. I'm still trying to find it on here. You know, it says, you know, you completed the class sort of thing. But I can't find... I can't find the class on the computer. I'm looking right at it while I'm talking to you. And it should have a green check mark on it. And it's not on there. When did I take this class? New, no, new, no, and new. No. Well, poo. All right, let me see if I can find this thing. All righty, it was unchecked for some reason. Um, all right, so the name of the class was Pockets Full of Posies with, I think her name is pronounced Lisa Young Art. Um, she has all kinds of places you can go find her and so on social media. She um, has Instagram. She has a website. You can go take other classes that cost money. This, this summer retreat thing is free unless you decide you want to keep your videos, and it's like $79. But there's like five or six days worth of this stuff on there, and each video is approximately 45 minutes to an hour and six minutes long. There is some chit-chat in the beginning. Um, so I went through some past stuff and looked up what I thought might interest me and I found one that especially interests me. Uh, much of the stuff doesn't trip my trigger but this one sure did. Um, let's see. She has a she has all kinds of classes um, on her website And there, she does a lot of watercolor painting of real and abstract florals. All right, so you, I, I watched it, and then I did what she was doing. I followed along. First, let me say that I am not exposing anything that you cannot find anywhere else on the Internet. Okay, so I'm not going to show you how to do the class. I'm just going to show you the results of my um, time in the class. Okay, so to show you what I mean, 
I'm going to thumb through here and point out a couple of things that pertain to what I'm going to show you in a second. This is a book that I made when I started watching Corey Dahman's videos and I could not remember all the places that I saw these cool things. So what I do, I would make them and then give credit to where I found them. It's a lot of sewing and scrap stuff. These are all different things that I made that are examples of things that I made later on. These are the, I guess, the blueprint to them. Some of them I remember how to do, some I don't. And so what I did was I would write on here what it is. And after a while, I started giving credit to all these places. Most of these are from Corey Dahman. Um, here's a folded book page. Okay, you take the paper and you fold it into pockets. This is not a new concept. And here is the other side of it. Whoops. Here is the other side of it. You take paper and you fold and then you make pockets. Or you glue them to look like you fold them into pockets. All right, these are all glued. All right, so let's see what else is in here. There's so much in here. <laughs> took me a while to accumulate all this. I watched a lot of videos to get there. Like the Cafe Craft, this stuff all came from her. Um, Gail Agustinelli did the fake little envelopes you glue together to make a little display. Uh, Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs did this one. Again, it's another um, thing to make it look like you folded the paper, but the pockets or the papers are glued one on top of the other. Let's see what else is in here. Here's another one. It's hard to see it this way because I've glued it on there co cockeyed. Here's one where you sew. I sewed the stuff on and then it's got pockets here. And then I think, did I glue it down? I can't remember if I glued this. No, I don't think I did. There. It's another pocket. So th this is from Shannon Chop, Chop and Hayes. Um, so this concept of folding paper, here we go, and making pockets is nothing new. Okay, so I'm not revealing anything that's trademarked or, you know, it's, it's just an idea that's been around a while that this lady did this Lisa person, Lisa Young. Um, this is her version of a concept that's been around a while. So I wanted to say that because I don't want any trademark issues or get struck by anything. And they also said they would like to see people's videos. So I'm going to show you this. So this is the class, uh, kind of the class that she taught. And this is the results. Now I spent all day doing this. So this took me all day yesterday. She folds a piece of paper and makes three pockets. All right, so I really enjoy doing this because it just holds things. Pockets are really important to me. I like pockets and um, tuck spots, that kind of stuff, because I like making journals like that. Some people just like it where it's like glued on there and then they put a saying on it and they're done. I, I'm not necessarily in that train. I'm not following that train of thought all the time, but I do use it. So here's um, a small piece of paper. I think it was just a regular book page that was a five by seven that was used with the same concept that she used to fold her stuff. And then it's got pockets in it. So I spent all day taking coffee dyed, um, where is it? Coffee, a coffee dyed book where I just dyed the whole thing and I tore all of it apart and I've been painting on it and cutting it up. So that's what this, one of these pages, is what this pocket is right here. So then I painted all day. Now these are not, she doesn't really instruct you a whole lot on how to paint. She's just showing you the possibilities and showing you her style. So this is my style. And then I painted that this morning. I painted this yesterday and I, I'm not crazy about this because then I thought, well, I'll do the fake sewing around there. Oh, that was a mistake. I did a pin, and I don't like the way it looks. I might end up covering up because I'm really not crazy about it. So I went through, and I made all these little pieces with flowers because you guys know I like botanicals, and that's what my Artemat stuff is, is mostly botanicals. This is a fantasy flower. This is not my idea. This is somebody else's. I think it's, it's a Debbie... Oh, I can't remember her last name. Is it Bliss? Anyway, so this is her idea. These are just random whatevers. So I'm not going to put these back in the pockets. It'll take too long. Oh, wait, here's one here. 
So this is an example of one of the flowers that she painted on the video in the class. All right here's the next group. I happen to have a whole bunch of these. Let me show you these. A whole bunch of these that are the iCAD cards and I just jelly printed them to get them ready for iCAD and I never use them. They've been sitting here on my desk for a year or more. So I decided I was going to use them. So I used one that was red, did black Posca, outlined it in white, and then glued it on top another one of these cards. And to bring together and to help with the red background, I punched out with this little punch these little red dots here to look like nails or, you know, push pins. So I did three little hearts, not crazy about the way it looks, but you know, it is what it is. Then I just did all kinds of painty things. This is on these, this is an iCAD card from the past that I used. I just did different things in different sizes. Here's something I, 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 I wanted to cover up the masking tape. So I just glued that over where it joins the books together. Again, I just did things that I like. This is an idea off of Pinterest. I've drawn this a couple times in the past. These are not actually real flowers. I'm just painting. Then I put this in here, made this out of a scrap. These are all uh, scraps from doing another painting and then I just glued them on here. Here's one that I painted on the book. Here's one I did this morning and I made this picture. That's a bookmark and I'm looking at the very tiny print at the bottom. I think it says 2021. This was during the great pandemic. So I had a small piece of paper that was left over from one of these, like the top part where there was no print. Oh wait, no, this is an iCAD card. Sorry, this is an iCAD card from this one, I think. And so I just recreated this to kind of mimic that right there. And then this is the iCAD card. This is the, I think this is the top part. And then I cut it off. Or the bottom part. I don't remember. <laughs> and then I rounded the corners on this one. Didn't round the corners on anything else, just side with going around it. Not like in this one, but I'm hang on to it because I made it. All right, so there are all the flowers or the botanicals that are in here. And if you are signed up for the pigeon letters and you like this kind of stuff, you really should go see your class. It was aired on Thursday, August the 1st, day one. And it's second from the bottom of the day's worth of videos. And it's called Pockets Full of Posies with Lisa Young Art. And if you go and click on some of her, um, ah, the words escape me. If you click on her social medias, you will go to where she teaches classes. Let's see, I did, I went to um, her website. And her website has a thing where you can subscribe to get her emails. She has a home, about me, shop, classes, blog, support, coast to coast. And she just creates the cutest little things. It, she has classes. She paints. Um, she makes little books like this. I just thought it was such a fun, a fun class. And for me... Doing this this free thing introduces me to new artists that I've never heard of or seen before. So that just made me happy. I, and, of course, you know I like folding and making stuff. Um, one of the things that she does that I could not do was that she tapes up the bottoms of these with masking tape and up the sides so her stuff won't fall out. I, don't, I didn't want to use masking tape, so I glued mine shut. Um, the one thing I did do, though was that she was talking about putting them together to make a book. So I did use masking tape like she did in hers. And you can see it, but as soon as I can figure some way to cover it up, I'm going to. I love washi tape, but washi tape doesn't stick well. And yes, I know you can put glue on it, but I was in the throes of things and 
I didn't do it. I probably could take washi tape and cover it up, but I don't want it to take away from what the botanicals are. So there it is. You know, there's the tape. So I, I made a little book, and yes, the outside has the masking tape on it, and I tried to kind of minimize the masking tape by putting this over it. And I didn't want to put it over too far because what if I want to put another page booklet here? I think this might be it for me. Uh, it might be the only one I make. But I had a great time doing it. It filled up a whole day, and it got my creative brain working again. And, like, I got outside the Artemat thinking, only thinking. And I really enjoyed the class. So I would like to thank Barbara Clark for telling me about the class. Barbara Clark is also an artist who's looking at the classes. And she has videos. I will try to remember to link everything below. So I hope you guys enjoy the, um, let's see, I, 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 Summer Creative Retreat 2024. That's it. It was just to tell you that it, it was. it's a great thing, and it's still going on. You still have Monday and Tuesday. Actually, once the person is done their live, then all this stuff is still on the site. All you have to do is send in your email and sign up, and it's free. It's free. You get exposed to so many artists you may never heard of, never seen. You like something they do. I I don't own an, I, I don't do iPad stuff, so I'm not interested in the Procreate stuff, but I know there's a lot of people out there that are very interested in it. So sign up and, and, and go look, and they're going to leave it open, I think, for either 24 or 48 hours after the classes are open. So hurry. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Happy creating.